Hi friends, this is Ms. Guerrero. Today we'll be reading Cesar Chavez, The Struggle for Justice, written by Richard Griswold del Castillo, illustrated by Anthony Cordo. Cesar Chavez was a very important Mexican-American leader in the United States. He was a man who improved the lives of poor farm workers. He fought to help them get better wages and working conditions. He helped them gain more respect and end discrimination against them. Cesar Chavez organized the United Farm Workers Union to do this. He gave the poor hope that life could be better. Cesar Estrada Chavez was born on March 31, 1927, near Yuma, Arizona. His parents had both come to the United States from Mexico. His father opened and operated a small grocery store. Cesar and his four brothers and sisters live on a small farm near their father's grocery store. As Cesar played in the fields with his brothers, he never dreamed that his life will be linked forever to those fields that provide so much food for our country. Cesar learned from his parents. His mother told him many stories that taught about the importance of helping the poor and not being violent. Cesar's grandma also taught him how to believe in God and the teachings of the Catholic Church. Cesar's uncle taught him to read in Spanish. One day, Cesar's teacher punished him for speaking Spanish. Some children made fun of his accent and called him names because he was Mexican-looking. This hurt his feelings. This was Cesar's first experience with discrimination. When he came home, his mother told him he had been born in the United States and was an American. When Cesar was 10 years old, his family lost their farm and store during the 1930s. They had to leave Yuma and go to California to look for work. The whole family became migrant farm workers without a home. They moved from place to place, planting and harvesting crops, vegetables, and fruits. Working and moving from place to place, Cesar learned how poor farm workers were. They work long hours in the hot sun and receive very low pay. Sometimes they had to live in labor camps in old houses, tents or chicken coops in the rain and cold. They were always very hungry. Sometimes they were cheated by the labor bosses because they were Mexicans. They were discriminated against in stores and schools. Cesar joined the Navy during World War II. When he got back to California, he met Helen Favela, and they got married. They moved to San Jose. There, Cesar met Father Donald McDonald, who taught him more about how labor unions had helped improve workers' life. Cesar read about Mahatma Gandhi, a famous leader in India who had won independence for his people throughout nonviolence means. In 1952, Cesar began working as an organizer for the community service organization. Cesar's job was to help poor families register to vote. He helped them organize to improve their communities by paving streets and building parks. Soon Cesar became the national director, but he never forgot the problems of the farm workers. In 1962, he quit his job to dedicate himself full-time to organizing a union to help the poor farm workers. Cesar and Helen worked hard for four years. They traveled up and down California, trying to convince farm workers to join a union. It was called the Farm Workers Association. His friends Dolores Huerta, Gil Padilla, and his cousin Manuel also helped. Cesar told the workers that they will have better lives if they organized a union. Finally, in 1962, they had their first union convention. They designed a new flag for their organization, the, the famous Union Eagle. On September 16, 1965, Mexican Independence Day, Cesar and the members of his union went on strike to get better wages from the grape growers in Delano, California. This grape strike soon attracted worldwide attention. The growers opposed the strike with violence, but Cesar followed the way of Gandhi and would not allow any violence from the strikers. 
He said, we can turn the world if we can do it non-violently. Starting on March 16, 1966, Cesar led a march from Delano, California to Sacramento, the state capital. This was more than 340 miles. Many farm workers joined the procession. The purpose was to tell people about the struggle of the farm workers. At the front of the line was the banner of the Virgin of Guadalupe, the patron saint of Mexico. At night, the marchers camped in small farming towns, and Cesar met hundreds of new supporters. At the state capitol, he announced that they had won their first victory. A grower had agreed to raise the wages of the workers. During the grape strike, Cesar asked the people to stop eating grapes to show their support for their farm workers. This was called a boycott. Farm workers, students, and ministers and priests traveled all over the United States to tell people about the strike and boycott. Millions of people joined the farm workers' struggle and stopped eating grapes. But many of the farmers did not want a union of farm workers. The strike continued. Cesar's group was now called the Union Farm Workers, UFW. Some people talked about violence to get what they wanted. Cesar continued to be against all violence. Even when bullies hired by the farm owners beat up and injured the union members, he decided to go on a hunger fast to show how important it was to be peaceful. Cesar did not eat food for 25 days. He became very weak and many people worried that he would die. Finally, Bobby Kennedy, the president's brother, came to visit him and he ended his fast. Cesar's words when he ended his fast were, Our struggle is not easy. Those who oppose our cause are rich and powerful, and they have many allies in high places. We are poor. Our allies are few, but we have something the rich do not own. We have our own bodies and spirits, and they and the justice of our cause as our weapons. On July 29, 1970, the boycott and strike worked. Most of the farmers agreed to sign an agreement with the union. The UFW had won. They met to sign the contracts at the union headquarters called 40 Acres. This was the first time farm workers had won such a victory. But this was not the end of the struggle. Almost immediately, others tried to destroy the union and Cesar had to lead the farm workers again. They marched and boycotted again. Some UFW members were killed because they supported the union. Finally, in 1975, Governor Jerry Brown of California signed the Agricultural Labor, Labor Relations Act, a law to protect farm workers from violence and discrimination. Cesar had helped convince the government that such law was necessary. Cesar Chavez encouraged the government to pass laws ending the use of the short handle hoe. This was a tool that hurt many farm workers because it forced them to bend over all day long. Cesar also was responsible for many changes in the labor laws to give farm workers basic rights. In the 1980s, Cesar Chavez fought against the use of pesticides in farming. Many chemicals used to kill bugs also harmed or even killed farm workers and their children. To convince farmers not to use bad chemicals, Cesar, at age 61, started another 36-day boycott and another long fasting. On April 23, 1993, Cesar Chavez died in the home of a farm worker family in Arizona. His friends and supporters had a huge funeral march in Delano. People remember him as a brave man who fought for poor people's rights. They remembered him saying, the truest act of courage, the strongest act of manliness, is to sacrifice ourselves for others in a totally nonviolent struggle for justice. To be a man is to suffer for others. God help us to be men. Today, many streets, schools, and official buildings are named in the honor of Cesar Chavez. In 1994, a year after his death, 
President Bill Clinton awarded Cesar Chavez the Medal of Freedom for his heroism and service to the principles of equality, justice, and liberty. And that was the end of the story. <laughs>